Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm swatching and reviewing all my burnt amber and other dark browns. I have uh, already reviewed my burnt uh, siennas and my light browns in a previous video. I put the link uh, here and in the notes. I hope I remember to do so. And uh, today we are swatching uh, my dark browns. Let's dive in. I will start with my burnt ambers and the first one is Lucas. Lucas uh, has a formula that um, has three pigments. I must say that each brand have its own formula, but this is uh, a bit different from the others and it is a PY155. Hansa Yellow, PR176, which is a substitute for alizarin crimson, and PBK7. So I started with a mistake. This is my raw amber, actually, because I put an extra pan here. So I will put here the real burnt amber, which I remember I liked. It's much warmer. So this is the real burnt amber. You see the difference between uh, the raw amber I swatched here, which is wrong. Burnt amber is a much warmer shade with a lot of uh, variation. And, uh, but the formula is correct. It's a uh, Ansa Yellow, Carmine and uh, PBK7, which is carbon black. Uh, and this is a really nice burnt amber, although it's made with uh, three pigments, but uh, I like the result very much. Uh, it's warm and you can see a lovely difference between uh, mass tone and the washed down tones, uh, the diluted tones I like. This is the raw amber, which is not as nice uh, as the burnt amber. It's not a color that I buy the raw ambers I have, uh, I have them because I have uh, found them in my sets, but I never buy raw amber because it's a color that I really don't like. Always Lucas, and it's called Burnt Green Earth. But I wanted to swatch it here because from what I remember, it's very similar to Burnt Amber and uh, it's darker should have a earthy green undertone but i don't really see it but the pigment composition is exactly the same of this uh, burnt amber but um, the result is warmer as you see and we'll see when it dries but uh, it's a um, unusual fact that they put two browns with exactly the same formula. It's probably in different ratio, but they look very much the same. Actually, I like this burnt green earth more than the burnt amber. Then I have White Nights. White Nights is from my well-used uh, palette. I, it's full of cut hair, sorry, but um, White Nights is a very nice uh, palette to have, uh, good price point, great vibrant creamy colors and um, my only problem with um, White Nights is that I feel a bit awkward in using Russian products in this moment as long as the war lasts. When I can I prefer to use uh, Rosa Gallery which is a white color, a watercolor from Ukraine. So I, I really like White Nights. Look, this burnt amber is really nice, but um, I prefer to use products from Ukraine rather than from uh, Russia. I don't have a burnt uh, amber 
in my Rosa Gallery palette, but we will swatch other paint from my uh, palette from uh, Rosa Gallery from Ukraine. Schminke, I have this tube. It is a new acquisition for me. I have not tried it, but when I see it uh, in videos, uh, I find it very beautiful, very creamy, very pigmented, which makes me happy because I have bought uh, a large tube of this burnt sienna. And uh, it's so rich and velvety. It's a really yummy. Schminke paints is always very yummy. Look at uh, the beautiful granulation. And this is Schminke. Now we continue with our burnt ambers and I have Daniel Smith's recent acquisition. I have just uh, published uh, my review for this wonderful, wonderful palette. And this is made only with PBR7, just like Schminke. So it's a single pigment and it's uh, natural iron oxide. And this is also wonderful. For me, Daniel Smith is a recent discovery because it's an American brand and in Italy it's not so easy to find. We're just starting now to find it in Italy. But uh, now I'm really crazy about this brand. It's a bit more expensive here uh, in Europe than in the US, but uh, it's really worth it. It goes a long way and the colors are wonderful. Then I have another tube, uh, which is uh, Rembrandt. Rembrandt uh, is a Dutch uh, brand. I have a son who lives in the Netherlands, so I'm always happy to buy Dutch products. My son studies in the Netherlands. And Rembrandt has a great price point. It's my go-to brand. It's never a disappointment. And uh, I find that uh, it's always very lovely paint. It's, uh, so the Maston is really warm, uh, high granulation, nice flow on paper. The granulation is really awesome. Let's see what happens to this granulation when it dries. But look at here, the Maston. Wow, this is so, I don't want to overwork it, but it's really beautiful. So far, maybe my preferred is Rembrandt because it's warmer. I like warm browns. Now I'm swatching uh, a Gallo, which is a uh, handmade. Look at the beautiful box. It's a small set that I have recently bought and reviewed. It's an Italian handmade watercolor. Look at how beautiful it is. And they have this burnt amber, which is made, which is made with the PBR8. And uh, here is my palette. This is really a yummy product. Although I think that big brands at the end of the day have nothing to envy to handmade products. Handmade have a charm, but um, big brands have a high quality as well. I think that the quality that you get with the Rembrandt or Daniel Smith or Schminke is near to perfection. Of course, handmade watercolor can be really charming. But um, the flow, for instance, is not as good as in big brands, I find. But it has a beautiful hue. Let's um, see what happens when it dries. Lovely granulation. And uh, we only have uh, one left in this category, which is Burnt Brown by Paul Rubens. They don't call it burnt amber. I have this palette where I poured my tubes by Paul Rubens. These also I have reviewed in a previous video. 
I will link all the li I will leave all the links. Um, and this burnt brown is made with the PBR7, and it's not uh, at all uh, a burnt amber. It's more I don't know. It's more a raw amber. I think that Paul Rubens uh, has uh, good quality paint. Uh, but problems with the names and pigments, because sometimes I see that pigments don't go with the name or vice versa. Really, they have problem with translations. The color is nice, but it's uh, definitely more a raw amber than a burnt brown. Now we open the raw amber section. Raw amber as well has uh, very different formulas. This is uh, White Nights. Actually, they call it Amber. They don't call it Raw Amber, but it's a Raw Amber. And it's made with PY43, which is Yellow Ochre, PBR7, Natural Iron Oxide, and PBK7, which is Carbon Black. Uh, this is uh, one of those colors that uh, you can use uh, in, uh, in your paintings, landscapes, but my, you see that among all my browns, my amber is the fullest because I never use it. I use uh, very much uh, red ochre, which is about sienna, basically. I use sepia, I use uh, burnt amber, I use mars brown, but raw amber is there. Then I have Amber, call it Amber by Paul Rubens. They call it Amber, but uh, believe me, this is not an Amber for me. This is a burnt Sienna. And uh, look at this. When I say that they have problems with names and pigments, this is definitely a burnt Sienna. It's a transparent red oxide. This is made with PBR7 and PR101. I don't see a raw amber in this. It's by all means a burnt sienna. I swatch it here because it says amber, just like white knight, but it's not an amber. It's a burnt sienna. I should have swatched this with my burnt siennas. Having said this, um, it's a lovely burnt sienna. Look at this, it's an orangey version. The burnt sienna is more a burnt amber for me. And uh, I swatched the burnt sienna here. Look at this. This is their burnt sienna. Yeah, it's still a burnt sienna. It's made with PBR7, this one. But um, there are two burnt siennas, these two. Now, we go back to Rosa Gallery because we have to swatch their amber. They call it amber, like uh, white nights. This is my Rosa Gallery palette. It's a wonderful paint from Ukraine. Not so easy to find online, but I find it on Etsy. And this is, once again, I... I'm not crazy about this color. I need to understand how to use it. If you have suggestions or recommendation about how to use amber or raw amber, please do let me know because I am in difficulty. I am at a loss with this color. I really don't know how to use it. This one by Rosa Gallery is made with PBR7. So it's a single pigment and I prefer this to the White Knights or the Lucas. But they're all very dull. I really don't know how to use them. I'm waiting for your suggestions. And then I have Lucas. It's going to be the same that I swatched by mistake here. And the formulation is still the same. PY 155, PR 176 and PBK 7. You see a shadow here. It's my cat that has come to see me. 
Then I have this Cotman tube. I started out with Cotman's, but uh, I tend not to use them very much lately. I, I find that if you pour them in a half pants, they're very hard to re-wet. And the very good student grey, they are the student range by Windsor & Newton. But if you try the professional formula, there is really a great difference. But still, I think that as a student uh, grade formula, they are at the top. Mm, honestly, this raw amber by Cotman, raw amber, I think is uh, nicer than the previous ones that I have swatched because it has a touch of yellow ochre inside. You see the PY42 and it gives a yellow undertone that uh, makes it more pleasant. So although I said that the uh, one is not uh, meeting the standards of an artist grade range, this particular color, I think this raw amber is much, much lovelier than the ones that I have uh, swatched uh, before. Then we have Daniel Smith, my wonderful new set. How much I love poured watercolor instead of extruded. Look at how pigmented it is. Mm. And it is in a half pence, it's not from the tube, but still it wets so easily. And the flow paper is extraordinary, really extraordinary. This is made with PBR7, single pigment. Now I'm swatching a new tube that I have bought on a sale because the Schmincke paints were on sale and uh, I always take advantage from sales. This is called uh, Mother Brown, Bruno di Garanza in Italian. It's made with PR206, which is a quinacridon maroon. I'm so happy of all my quinacridon colors that uh, I'm thinking of uh, a video about all my quinacridon colors. They're not always called quinacridons. I have my fingers full of paint now. In this case, they call it mother brown, but it is a queen brown, actually, queen maroon. And uh, quinacridon colors are so transparent, so light, fast, so pure so pigmented so if you are looking forward to a video about queen colors this family of pigments let me know this is more in the reddish um, realm in the reddish category so i could have swatched this with my burn siennas but it's here now and it's a red brown and it is very nice um, very transparent, like all queen colors, mother brown. Then I have a color that um, still I have to understand. It's the only Van Dyke uh, brown I have, and it is from uh, My Mary Blue, an Italian brand. And it's quite a dull brown. It's made with PBR7, so it's a single pigment, always this PBR7. You make burnt brown, burnt sienna, you make a lot of colors with this PBR7. But to me, it looks a bit like a raw amber. I need to try other Van Dyke browns to see if they are like this or maybe darker. And I think it's a bit weak. I don't know, I'm not... Uh, I have poured it in my go-to palette, so I have it put it in a half pans, but I don't reach out to this color so often as I could. Just uh, not crazy about it. And this is the Van Dyke uh, brown. It's granulating though, and it's slightly warmer than the raw ambers now that I swatch side by side. So it's a nice color, but it's a bit weak. I find it a bit weak. Let me know if you have other Van Dyke browns. So what is your experience? I'll be very curious. Now, um, a brown that um, I like very much. 
and it is my Mars Brown by White Knights. Uh, when you see the word Mars, uh, it means that um, it is a synthetic version of uh, a, a natural pigment. And PBR6 uh, is a synthetic version of uh, PBR7. PBR7 is a natural is natural iron oxide, where uh, PBR6 is a synthetic, synthetic, oh, synthetic iron oxide. But look at how beautiful it is. It's very warm and uh, it's a beautiful hue. It's a color that I use very, very willingly. I use it really with pleasure. This is the Burnt Amber PBR7 from White Knights, and this is the Mars Brown. It's a bit strange that they put both in this palette because they look very much the same. They're a bit interchangeable. But um, I use the two. I find them interchangeable, and I find that the Mars Brown is maybe slightly weaker, but uh, it is really nice. And then we have another Mars Brown, always the Mars stands for synthetic and this has a completely different formula this is made with py42 which is synthetic uh, yellow ochre pr101 red iron oxide and pbk7 which is a black carbon black let's see the difference it's more yellowish absolutely more yellowish than the white knights uh, equivalent but um, it's a nice color. As a gallery is famous for the flow on paper. And it's true. Very, very good flow on paper. Lovely granulation. Yummy color. Okay, let's go on. I have three colors left and I'm swatching sepia. I like to use sepia diluted for pavements, sidewalks, uh, and uh, or concentrated for um, shadow or mix with indigo to make darks. This is by White Knights and it is PR102, which is uh, natural red iron oxide, PR107, which is a permanent pink, and PBK7 carbon black. Uh, it's not my favorite sepia, but it's a sepia that I use. Um, it's not my favorite because it's a bit cold, I find, compared to Sennelier, which is for me the loveliest sepia I have ever, never used. Now, Rosa Gallery, always a full pan. And uh, it is slightly warmer than White Nights. Uh, I never realized it. Uh, you realize the difference is much, much better when you swatch them side by side. Uh, it's a very funny. It's, it's a lot of fun to swatch uh, a color of different brands because you learn a lot. I, I really like this. This is warmer than White Knight, so it's nicer. And this is made with uh, PBR7, PBK7, black, and PR177, which is a substitute for alizarin crimson. It's a cool red. So it's also different, the composition, but uh, the result is lovelier because it's warmer. And now my favorite sepia, which is this uh, well-used tube, uh, by Sennelier, it's called Warm Sepia. You will see why in a minute. It's made with PBR7 and PBK7. And um, I need to go to the store and rebuy it um, because it's finished. You see the difference? First of all, it has a lovely, um, 
value range from uh, mass tone and uh, diluted values. And it's much warmer. It's called warm sepia. I don't know, every time I have tried the sepia after this, uh, I always said to myself, no, I need to rebuy this fashion from Sennelier. Now we let this dry and we come back. Okay, that was, that was pretty quick uh, because here is the 1st of July. We have a heat wave and uh, it didn't take long to completely dry my burnt raw amber and dark browns. I need to correct some mistakes. So this is wrong and this is or this is burnt sienna by Paul Rubens. And we have our dark browns. And uh, here we have really an incredible variety of values and hues uh, and undertones. The pigment that is most used uh, across all brands uh, is PBR7. Let's start with our burnt uh, amber. Burnt amber, here we have burnt amber. It's a color that I really like uh, very much and I use a lot. Uh, I'm always in my paintings. I also mix it with blue to get um, a dark or with indigo to get almost a black. And uh, I always like it. Uh, I have never found a brand that has a burnt amber that I don't like. I really like very much this Rembrandt uh, warm version, but now that it is dry, I see that it's maybe slightly weaker compared to the prestigious, more prestigious brands like Schminke or Daniel Smith. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a Winsor & Newton professional because I'm sure that it's going to be wonderful. So I think that I'm waiting for the next uh, sale or special offer and I will grab, grab some Winsor & Newton version of this burnt amber. But um, I could use each of these three and be happy. They're all beautiful. The White Nights, uh, uh, for my sketchbook is very nice, but for, I would not rebuy it. I think I would stay more with these uh, more expensive artist brands. And the Lucas is also nice. It's a, Lucas is a bit boring, maybe like brand is never very exciting, uh, but uh, they're always, uh, they always meet high standards. And this uh, Burnt Amber by Lucas, but even more the Burnt Green Earth are very beautiful. This Burnt in Green Earth is not boring at all now that I watch it from a closer distance. It's really lovely color. So this is a nice color to consider in the future. Then we have uh, the Burnt Brown by Paul Rubens. Don't like it at all. Uh, my raw umbers, these are the raw umbers um, to here and here. It's a color that I don't use, so if you have any suggestion, please feel free to write them in the comments. But if I should pick one, I should pick either Daniel Smith or even more, I um, must say, my Cotman student grade, which is absolutely nice. Uh, then this doesn't fit in this collection, it's almost red, this mother brown, this queen color. Then I have uh, two Mars browns, and they are mm, a yellowish uh, version of burnt amber, not a color that maybe I would buy open stock, but uh, I prefer burnt amber than Mars brown. I don't think uh, that I would need uh, mass brown in addition to a burnt amber in my palette. I think that the burnt amber is more than enough. And uh, sepia, there is no comparison. I love my Sennelier se warm sepia. And today I'm going out with my dogs. I'm going to the city centers. I live in Turin in Italy 
and there is a lovely local store and I will buy my warm sepia by Sennelier today because it's almost finished. So that's all for now and um, I'm uh, thanking you a lot for having watched this video with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do so, I always invite you to like and subscribe because that helps a lot my channel to grow if you subscribe and uh, if you have any remark please do let me know because that also helps me to grow your comments your remarks it's always interesting i'm elisabetta an italian watercolor artist with a passion for art supplies for the moment being that's all one big ciao from italy and i see you in my next video ciao